By outward appearances, Vladimir Putin seems to be very popular in Russia. This is interesting. Putin started a war against Ukraine that has resulted in thousands of Russian casualties, has seen very few major strategic objectives be accomplished, and has made NATO more united than any time since the Cold War, with two countries, Sweden and Finland, likely to join soon precisely because of the war. Yet Putin is still drawing large crowds at pro-government rallies, and the poll numbers show similar levels of support. Before the war began, Putin's approval rating in Russia was 67.2%. After the war began, in a classic rally-round-the-flag effect, it jumped to 81.6%. Things seem pretty great for the Kremlin. But there is a deeper question of whether we can trust any of this information as being accurate. It is common practice in autocratic regimes to force state employees to attend rallies under threat of losing their jobs. Meanwhile, polling is subject to a problem known as preference falsification. Imagine you lived in Russia and you received a phone call asking whether you support Vladimir Putin. It is possible that the caller comes from a totally legitimate news agency. But it is also possible that the caller is with a state entity and would not take kindly to hearing about your negative opinion. Thus, even if you hated Putin, you might still say that you support him just to avoid a trip to the Gulag. A poll showing 67.2 or 81.6% approval may therefore only reflect a much smaller percentage of true support. This is a problem for outsiders. Putin's ability to continue the war depends on the war's popularity. If all we see are inflated poll numbers, then it will be hard to gauge the effectiveness of policies like economic sanctions, which have come from almost all major economic powers. Fortunately, researchers have found a way to deal with this kind of problem. It's called a list experiment. Instead of directly asking whether a respondent supports Putin, the pollster calculates that support in an end-around way. The poll begins by asking, let's say, 800 people, a question that has nothing to do with Putin. Think about Joseph Stalin, Leonid Brezhnev, and Boris Yeltsin. How many of these people's activities do you generally support? The answers the survey respondents can give are numbers, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Thus, the respondents are not being asked which of these leaders they support, just how many. That question by itself appears to give no insight at all about Putin. But the pollster can solve that problem by asking a separate set of 800 people a similar question. They still ask the same question about Stalin, Brezhnev, and Yeltsin. But now they add Putin to the list. And instead of asking of a number 0 through 3, the respondents now answer 0 through 4. Again, these people are not being asked about whether they support Putin or any of the leaders. They are just being asked a single number. And yet the pollster can combine these two surveys and obtain the implied level of support for Putin. Imagine that the average number of the survey group without Putin was 1.82. Meanwhile, the average number for the survey group with Putin was 2.35. The difference between these two numbers is 0.53. Because the only difference in the surveys is the addition of Putin, this implies that an estimated 53% of people support him. Back in 2015, a team of political scientists used this type of list experiment to test whether Putin's popularity was real or hopelessly inflated. 
When directly asking respondents about Putin's popularity, they found that 86% of Russians supported him. In the list experiment, the average number of politicians supported without Putin was 1.18. With Putin on the list, the average number of politicians supported was 1.98. The difference between those two numbers was 0.79. Thus, the estimated portion of people who supported Putin was 79%. Comparing the direct versus indirect measurements, the difference is 7%. This suggests that respondents only engaged in a small amount of preference falsification. In fact, the confidence interval for the preference falsification estimate ranged from negative 0.3% to 17%, meaning that it is plausible that there wasn't any preference falsification at all. In short, Russians appeared to genuinely support Putin, but these findings come with several important caveats. To start, this experiment was conducted back in 2015, which is not 2022. Whether the 81.6% today is real depends on whether anything has changed over time. And something might be changing. The incentive to falsify preferences depends on how many security forces are working. The more there are, the less you'd want to admit to anti-government sentiments. With a war going on, it is reasonable to think that domestic surveillance has increased. Thus, the lack of preference falsification in 2015 might not reflect what is happening in polls from 2022. Another problem is that the list can implicitly reveal some individual's preferences. Imagine you do not support any of the four politicians' policies. If you answered honestly, then the pollster would know for sure that you do not support Putin. Likewise, if you supported all four politicians' policies, and you answered honestly when asked, the pollster would infer that you did support Putin. Thus, if preference falsification were a concern, and respondents thought about the problem strategically, we would see fewer zeros and more fours than we should. Fortunately, there are diagnostics that researchers can run to check for that issue, and it appeared not to be happening in this survey. Another issue is that the list itself changes the framing. When a respondent is asked whether they support Putin, they are only thinking about Putin. But imagine that the respondent is asked about support for Joseph Biden, Boris Johnson, and Angela Merkel, with Putin still along for the ride. This frames the question as an East versus West problem. Even someone who does not particularly like Putin may still respond with a one if they hate Western countries. It's not obvious how the framing might taint things when we are comparing Stalin and Brezhnev and Yeltsin to Putin. However, the list experiment was also repeated with three contemporary Russian politicians, and the results were basically identical. The final issue is that a list experiment requires the respondent to pay attention for longer. It's not a simple yes or no question. If respondents experience some level of fatigue with the longer question, it could artificially change the support in the experiment. To test for this, the researchers did a separate survey. First, they directly asked Russians about their support for Fidel Castro. They then ran a list experiment, adding Alexander Lukashenko, Angela Merkel, and Nelson Mandela to the list. In the direct survey, 60% supported Castro. In the list experiment, 51% did. That's a 9% difference in a situation where there shouldn't be any reason to misrepresent one's true preferences. Getting back to the original experiment, it's possible that the 7% difference between direct and indirect surveys for Putin are not the result of people lying in the former case. It's just mental fatigue. If so, 
that would indicate that Putin is just as popular as the standard surveys indicate. This ended up being a very important diagnostic. In 2020, the researchers re-ran the experiment multiple times. They found similar results then as well. For example, this time around, one of the direct surveys showed a 63% approval rating for Putin. In contrast, the list experiment showed only 40%. This would suggest that 23% of individuals falsified their preferences. Following one of those earlier concerns, it might appear that circumstances changed on the ground, causing more respondents to lie. But in the Castro diagnostic, the direct survey showed 56% approval. The list experiment estimated only a 34% approval. The 22 percentage point difference is essentially identical to Putin's 23. This suggests that the respondents have just become lazier, not that they're feigning support for Putin. The key takeaway here is that Putin is still probably very popular among Russians, despite the apparent issues with pretending to be satisfied with Putin's performance. What do you think Putin's true approval rating is? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Take care.